trigonometric ratios for special triangles. Now these special triangles are the ones which have angles like 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, 0 degrees and 90 degrees. Most of the time we are not talking about 0 and 90 degrees but here I, for me 0 degrees and 90 degrees are very special and so here is a video on 0 degrees and that is followed by the one on 90 degrees right. Now let's understand what is 0 degrees in a right triangle right. So for that I'll make a coordinate plane to explain you how. Most of the time during this video especially when we are talking about sine, tan and cosine then we are actually restricting ourselves to the first quadrant and we are saying these angles are acute angles. So we are really considering acute angles in a right triangle, correct? Now let's consider a triangle which is kind of like this, right? That's my small triangle here in quadrant 1 and it starts with origin O and let me call this as an angle A. So angle A for me is the acute angle, right? It is considered to be between 0 and 90 degrees, correct? Now, in this triangle, we need to define sine, cosine, and tangent. So for that, we know Sokatua, right? Sokatua is something which you remember to figure out what is sine, what is cosine, and what is tangent. So let me write them again as a reminder, right? We just started trigonometry, and we need to get conversant with these terms, and that's why repetition helps. Now, sine is... S O Sokatoa. So this is opposite side O for us, right? Sokatoa is S O H, where we write this as sine of an angle. So we are using angle A. So sine of an angle is equals to opposite over hypotenuse. So I'm not writing opposite O P P spelling, but just O and H. So opposite over hypotenuse, right? And so this is my opposite side and that's my hypotenuse and this is my adjacent side, okay? Now, that is sine. And now what is cos? Cos is adjacent over hypotenuse. So we write for cos adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent and hypotenuse is the ratio of adjacent side to hypotenuse, right? So we write here cos of angle A is equals to A over H. And that's how we get this term ka, C-A-H, right? And tan, tan for us is opposite over adjacent, right? So tan is opposite over adjacent side. So we say tan of A is equal to opposite over adjacent side. So these are basic definitions of our primary trigonometric ratios, sine, cosine, and tangent. Now, now we'll see what happens to these uh, trigonometric ratios as angle A approaches zero. So at present let us assume that angle is around 40 degrees, correct? And now we will move this arm of our angle, right, downwards, towards this side. So as we move it downwards, A will approach zero, correct? A becomes lesser and lesser and it approaches zero, correct? Angle is being measured along, see, always when we say talk about the angle in general, we are measuring it along the positive x-axis. How far is it from positive x-axis, right? And that's our y-axis, correct? So at present, this is called the terminal arm, right? And this is our initial arm. So the angle is between the initial and terminal arm. Perfect. Now, as we bring this terminal arm closer to initial arm, angle A decreases, correct? So the idea is to decrease angle A. So what we are trying to do is, angle A, we are trying to make it smaller. So we are trying to decrease it, rather make it smaller and smaller, and decrease it so that it ultimately becomes zero degrees, right? That's the whole idea. So the angle will be zero degrees if my terminal arm sits over the initial arm, correct? Then this angle will be zero degrees, right? Now, we will see that situation. What happens when this angle becomes zero degrees? So let's see what happens to hypotenuse 
you say hypotenuse will remain same, right? It is the radius of my circle. So hypotenuse remains same all along, correct? Since it is the radius of my circle, whether the circle is here, here, or a point on the circle with h as my radius, so h remains same, right? Now, what happens to the opposite side? Opposite side, as I bring it like here, so let me now make one angle so that we can see the change, right? So let's say we bring it here, see what happens to my opposite side. Opposite side was that big, now it becomes that small. So what I see is the opposite side decreases. Do you see it? It decreases. In fact, if I put it right there, opposite side will be zero. So we say, well, it approaches zero, almost zero, correct? Fine. So that is what is happening to the opposite side. How about the adjacent side? As I'm bringing A closer and closer to my x-axis, my hypotenuse and A are becoming same values, correct? Normally A is smaller than hypotenuse. A has to be in a triangle. Any two sides are smaller than the hypotenuse. But when I break this arm right on the initial arm, then hypotenuse actually increases and it increases up to the value of hypotenuse. So A approaches hypotenuse. This is what we see as the angle A decreases, correct? Now, if opposite and adjacent sides are changing, of course, sine and cosine and tangent are also changing, right? So let's see, how do they change? So let's write down here and try to figure out. So we, what we are doing is angle A we are working with and we are decreasing angle A. So this sign is saying decreasing, okay? So we are decreasing angle A and we want to see what happens to sine. Now, now O we see is decreasing, right? It is approaching zero. It is decreasing, decreasing and decreasing. Therefore, sine is decreasing. Hypotenuse remains same. How about the cosine? Cosine is increasing since A increases, right? A increases as you bring hypotenuse, I mean the radius, closer and closer and the angle A becomes closer to zero. A actually increases and it approaches the height, H. So it may be very, very high, right? And maximum will be A equals to H, right? So it increases since A approaches hypotenuse, right? Here, it decreases since opposite side, let me write now, opposite side approaches zero, correct? So it has to become zero. Now, how about tan? Now tan, opposite side is decreasing and A is increasing. So tan is increase, decreasing very fast. Let me put three arrows down. Very, very fast it is decreasing, right? Now, let's see what happens when angle A actually becomes very, very close to zero or is equal to zero. What happens? At that instance of time, opposite side becomes zero. Since opposite side becomes zero, we know what happens to sine. Now sine A will become zero. This is the number zero divided by hypotenuse. And so zero divided by anything is zero, right? So sine A becomes zero, correct? That's what we get. Now what happens to cosine? Now for cosine, cosine A as A becomes zero, hypotenuse becomes same as the adjacent side, right? So it becomes, hypot A becomes hypotenuse, right? So what we can see is it is hypotenuse over hypotenuse and cosine becomes one. Do you see that? And how about tan? So tan, since O, the opposite side becomes zero, so tan A, is zero over something, which is hypotenuse in this case, since A is becoming hypotenuse, tan A also becomes zero, right? So therefore, we can conclude that for this special, for this very special triangle, sine of zero degrees is equal to zero, correct? Cos of zero degrees is equal to one, and tan of zero degrees is equal to zero correct that's a very very important conclusion and it's very important for you to understand that the angle could be zero and if angle is zero then the opposite side is of zero height and adjacent side is of the same length as the radius or the hypotenuse correct that makes 
sin 0 as 0, cos 0 as 1 and tan 0 as 0, correct? I hope you remember this and apply effectively in your problems to come. Thank you.